everyone welcome back to my channel today the time has finally come where i'm going to talk to you about my top 10 books from 2023 this was hard i have to say i did my book bracket video a couple days ago it's already been uploaded to my channel and that kind of helped me narrow down my decision but it was still very difficult and while i was putting together my top 10 list i also put a list on the side of my honorable mentions and i have 16 honorable mentions for you i won't really say what any of these books are about but just know i love them i recommend them if you're interested in them we'll begin with the honorable mentions and then we'll get to the top 10. i've organized my honorable mentions by genre for romance i have done and dusted by lila sage cowboy romance what else do i need to say perfection then for a YA romance, I've got Better Than The Movies. This is like a 2000s rom-com movie in a book. I loved it. Then we've got Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams. This is the second book in the When in Rome series. This is about a flower shop owner and a bodyguard. Perfection. And lastly, we've got Happy Place by Emily Henry. This explores friendship. This explores people-pleasing. I loved it. There were some parts that were a little bit weird, but overall, loved it. It's Emily Henry. Everyone loves Emily Henry. Next, we have short stories and plays mixed together. So we've got King Lear by Shakespeare. Family drama mess and having a psychotic breakdown. Yeah, that's all you need to know. Then we've got The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. The most hilarious play I've ever read so so funny i need to see this in like live action because it was just so good and then we have a short story collection before the coffee gets cold by toshikazu kawaguchi this is all about time travel second chances regret relationship and family dynamics it was great next we have one that doesn't really fit in other categories but it is the book thief by marcus zuzak this is like a world war ii historical fiction and the narrator is death himself next we've got fantasies so i have a gathering of shadows by v e. schwab this is the second book in the darker shades of magic trilogy can't really say much about this but this is a very complex fantastical world mixed with magic it is really really intriguing not like anything i've ever read before and i loved it then we've got which i believe is on most people's favorites of the year fourth wing by rebecca yaros this has dragons war dragons the dragons are the best part um really really great and lastly we've got Babel by rf kuang this is a fantasy mixed with exploring colonialism linguistics and translation and history it was really really good very long but really really good and emotional then lastly we've got some classics so we've got the picture of dorian gray by oscar wilde i just realized i've got two oscar wildes on this list this is his only book that he's ever published it's about a man who is beautiful beyond words who tries to find a way to never age and it doesn't turn out good. <laughs> then we've got A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, the Christmas stories of all Christmas stories about Christmas, ghosts of past, present, and future. Such a heartwarming story. I loved it. It was perfect to read at Christmas. Then we've got A Farewell to Arms about Ernest Hemingway, another type of historical World War II or one. I. I think it's World War I, about a man who is an ambulance driver and his experience at the war, and there's a love story mixed in with all of it. Beautiful. I loved it. Oh, it made me cry. And lastly, we've got The Awakening by Kate Chopin. Very short story, packs a punch, about a woman who basically wants to leave her husband, wants to not be a mother anymore, and wants to just 
live her life the way she wants her to live her life and you kind of follow along that journey. So those were my honorable mentions. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about them, but I needed to add a little bit of information for you. I forgot one book. It is a romance. I just don't have it physically and it's called The Boardwalk Bookshop, which is a wonderful romance kind of literary fiction story about three women who own a flower shop, gift shop, bookshop kind of mixed ordeal all in one store together who then form a wonderful friendship group and you follow along their journey. It was such a wonderful, heartwarming romance. Perfect to read in the middle of winter because it gives you all the warm, fuzzy feelings that you want to feel and miss about the summertime. Now we can move on to my top 10 which I'm gonna put them out of the frame so you don't get any ideas. So the first book on this list I don't own and it is crazy that it made it to this list because it is the third book that I read this past year and that was Between Two Kingdoms by Suleika Jawad and this is her memoir. She was diagnosed with cancer in her early 20s and it threw her life for a loop as it would for anybody. And this story talks about grief. It talks about her battling the thought about dying and fighting this illness. And it was really, really tough for me to read. But it was also really, really good and healing in many ways. I don't talk about it too much, but my dad passed away from cancer uh, five, almost six years ago and it's something you never get over and whenever i hear stories and can hear perspectives of people that have gone through battling an illness and being really really close to their deathbed if not on their deathbed it does help kind of understand what my dad went through it was really 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 tough to read but really really powerful and great i do need to buy this book i don't know how i haven't bought bought it yet but i highly highly recommend it if you're looking for a memoir to read it is very emotional it's very heavy so pick it up when you are in the headspace to absorb that type of information but i highly highly recommend it the next book in my top 10 was actually on a lot of people's top 10 last year and I think we'll see it on many people's this year because we all got influenced to read it and that is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Seven. This is honestly unlike anything I've ever read before and it was so unexpectedly good. This is a story about two friends, Sam and Sadie, who meet in their young teen years and they bond together because of video games. And then as they grow older, you follow along, I think about maybe 30 years in their life where they become video game developers together alongside another friend that kind of joins in. And their friendship, very rocky. And you follow along that journey of all of it. And both Sam and Sadie are not very likable characters, but they are so real. It was a fantastic book. I didn't know what to expect from it because of what it was about. But the video game aspect of it was actually very fascinating to me. And then the friendship and all of that on top of it, you know, it added even more to the story. I did cry a couple times. This will break your heart, but... It was fantastic, highly recommend it. And I definitely want to read more uh, Gabrielle Zevin's work because I think she will be an author that I like. Oh, the next book I have here is such a heartwarming book and I am so shocked that I made it to my top 10, but it is The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. Hopefully I said that right. Um, this is coziness and i wouldn't say halloween but like fall and winterness in a book it was so amazing basically this is about a 
witch named Mika Moon. The witches in this book are basically trying to hide that they are witches so they don't get together very much. They kind of have to hide their magical powers and not use them that well and so Mika Moon kind of wants that community so what she does is that she acts like she is a witch online even though she is so obviously she is like showing her magical powers and stuff but people don't know that she's real but then she gets an email one day basically asking her to come and teach three little girl witches how to control their magic and so she goes and checks out this guy that sent her this email and checks out the house and meets these three witches and you kind of go along their journey and there's also a love um connection in this story it was so good like it was everything I needed and more to read at that moment. I think I read it in my 24 hour reading blog. I highly recommend this, especially in the fall time. If you can read it around like September to early November, I think it's the perfect season to read this book. The next book on my top 10 list is David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. So this is a thick book. I actually didn't read from this copy. I got this after I read from like a little tiny little copy I can't find it but this was my first Dickens and what a treat I absolutely adored his writing I think he is slowly becoming one of my favorite authors this is basically all about a little boy named David Copperfield and you follow along his journey and how as he ages and his life and it's so odd you wouldn't really think that you could read like 900 pages about a man's life but the things that this kid has to go through and then as he ages and you see the way that he grew up and the way that people influenced him created the person that he became and it was just such a great exploration about just growing up and family and friendship and living life and like some parts were boring and monotonous and just bleak but that's life it was so good and the ending you know it was sad yet heartwarming and I just think it was such a good book like I don't really have anything bad to say about it I think people may find this boring. I know a lot of people don't actually like David Copperfield and maybe because it's my first Dickens and I don't have any of his other stories to compare it to, I am giving it such a high rating, but I am so happy this was my first Dickens. I think it was fantastic. I think the word choices and the things that were said and the sentences and the prose, oh my god, it was beautiful. I wrote down so many quotes in my reading journal. I love this. It was so good. I, like, I don't know what else to say. It was just fantastic. If you're looking to get into Dickens' work, I would highly suggest this book. I don't think it's one that people read first often. I think his other works like A Tale of Two Cities, A Christmas Carol, um, Pickwick Papers, things like that are read first, but I love this. The next book I have is Reckless by Elsie Silver and honestly if I could I would just include the whole Chestnut Spring series in my top 10 for this year. There's five books in the Chestnut Spring series. I read the first book Flawless last year and then I read books two to five this year. I think though Reckless is my favorite. So Reckless all of these stories are centered around a small town in Vancouver I think. It's set in Canada called Chestnut Springs. This book though is about Theo Silva and he is a bull rider and he has a one night stand with Winter who is the sister of Summer who was in the first or the second book. And Winter is not, like she wasn't my favorite character in Summer's book but I grew to love her in this book so basically they have a one night stand and then Winter ends up pregnant. This was so good. I don't even like unexpected pregnancy tropes, but this was done so well. Elsie Silver is a master at writing romances, and I was giggling, laughing, blushing the entire time throughout this whole book. Absolutely adored it. I think Theo is such a heartwarming and soft and gentle yet rough man fantastic if you're looking for a romance 100% would recommend the chestnut spring series but yeah reckless which is book number four 
is definitely my favorite. The next book I have is Us Against You by Frederick Bachman. So this is the second book in the Beartown series. And so the Beartown series is basically about... Oh my, God, my foot is asleep. <gasps> Why does my foot feel like I don't know how to use it? So the Beartown series is about a little town called Beartown and there's nothing that really goes on there. The residents are a very small, tight-knit community, but they're obsessed with hockey. And hockey kind of runs the political side of this town. And they finally, in Beartown, have a team that might be good enough to qualify for like nationals or whatever it's called. And Us Against You is what happens after everything that happens in Beartown. I would say that this book is quieter, if I could use that word, than Beartown. I feel like not as much action happens in this book, but you get to explore some of the main characters more. You get to learn more about their backstory. You get to connect with them more, and I loved that part about reading this book. I love the characters in this series. I've been reading these books pretty slowly, so I read Bear Town in 2022 and I was like, oh, I don't know if I can continue the series because when I first started reading it, the winners came out. I don't want the series to end. So there's one more book after Us Against You and I will be reading it this year. It's called The Winners, but this is just such a magnificent story and it is one of the best books that I definitely read this year probably in my top five if I had to choose but I'm not going to. We've only got four more so the next book I have is The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. This was such an unexpected read. So I read The Dead Romantics by her I think in 2022 and I thought it was good but I wasn't obsessed with it. So when I saw she came out with a new book I wasn't like super interested in it but then I had a couple of my friends read it and they were like you need to pick this book up like read it ASAP. So I picked it up obsessed. I think I read it in like two days. It was so so good. So it's a story about Clementine and Ivan who are interconnected somehow through Clementine's aunt's apartment. So her aunt passes away, so she has her apartment, and it somehow travels back in time seven years where she meets Ivan, and she goes back in time and also to present day. It was such a fascinating concept. But the writing was so beautiful in this book. Honestly, the atmosphere was described so well. It's set in New York and whether it was in the apartment or whether it was on the streets in New York, I felt like I was there with them having their conversations or with Clementine while she's trying to navigate her life. It was just so fantastic and the touches on grief I adored. It was just so good. Oh my god, and Ivan, oh... What a sweetheart. Oh, this is just so good. So heartwarming. Fantastic. If you're looking for a romance, definitely, definitely try it out. Next, we have my top three, which will not come as a surprise if you watch my book bracket video. But for my third place, I would have to say it's Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. This was, again, such an unexpected book. I didn't know how I was going to feel about it because I've seen so many mixed reviews, either like a five star or a three star, and I adored it. It is again kind of like us against you or like david copperfield like it is quite bleak like there is just it's not like there's a lot of stuff going on but i think i'm noticing that i really enjoy any stories that really navigate life and what life has in store for you where whether it is your career or your friendships or navigating love navigating hardships and struggles. I love reading about that and love hearing perspective and just seeing what other people do, even if it's fiction. But this is a story about three friends, Kathy, Ruth, and Tommy, who were at a school. I never remember how to say the school. So it's called Hailsham, and it is like kind of like an orphanage, and you follow along their journey. The perspective is in Kathy's POV. It has elements of sci-fi in it, 
but I don't want to say anything other than that because I think it is fascinating to unravel what this book truly is about. It's great. It's really good. It was very heartbreaking. I cried. Oh, I can cry again <laughs> talking about it, but yeah. In second place, we've got The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. This is the second book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. I read this twice this year. It was my second reread of this year, but my first reread of a book that I also read for the first time this past year, and I have no regrets. This is definitely the best book in the series. It is a six star book. It is so beautiful. And the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy is about, um, it's kind of linked to Caraval, but not really. And it's a story about Jax, who is the Prince of Hearts and Evangeline. And this is kind of just, a continuation of book one and all of the stuff that happens in book one but here you get a lot more of their romance and their relationship i could cry thinking about this book i loved it so much and i'm so sad that the series is over i did not love the third book it was good but there was so much room for improvement and it was a little bit disappointing in the direction that it went but i just Oh my god this book i loved it loved it loved it loved it and last but not least in first place we are not surprised honestly if you told me this was my best and favorite book of 2023 like in january i would be shocked but it was the brothers kermazov by fyodor dostoevsky i love this book so much i still i'm obsessed with the annotations by the way but this was my first Dostoevsky, definitely not my last after I read it. What a beautiful book. And there is such a part of me that is so sad that Dostoevsky died before he released the second part of this book because this was supposed to be like the first part of their story. I'm gonna read you the back of this book because I think it describes what it's about very well and then I will tell you all my feelings. The Brothers Karamazov is a murder mystery, a courtroom drama, and an exploration of erotic rivalry in a series of triangular love affairs involving the wicked and sentimental Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov and his three sons, the impulsive and sensual Dmitri, the coldly rational Ivan, and the healthy red-cheeked young novice Alyosha. Through the gripping events of their story, Fyodor Dostoevsky portrays the whole of Russian life, its social and spiritual strivings, in what was both the golden age and a tragic turning point in Russian culture. <gasps> so good. Perfect, actually. As you heard, it is a murder mystery. There is courtroom drama, there is so much talk and exploration about these three brothers and how they navigate brotherhood and familial relationships as well as love and they all have different outlooks on life and different beliefs and you get to see from all of them but at the same time it's so odd because i felt like i was seeing myself in all three of them like different parts of me and it was just so great there is Definitely a lot of talk about religion, God, hell, existentialism, what is the meaning of life, all of those things. I would say it's an easy book to read, but there's a lot of depth to it and there's a lot of pages to get through. There's a lot of meat to the story that you can take a lot from it. It was so good i highly highly recommend this especially if you're into russian literature or if you've read dostoevsky's work before but haven't reached for the brothers karamazov i loved it again like i don't know if it's the same with dickens where i read david copperfield first because most people read i think crime and punishment first and then they don't love the brothers karamazov as much but to each their own we all have different reading tastes so Really, who knows if you will love this book unless you actually try and read it, then you will find out. So what a year. I can't believe this is my favorite book of the year, but I'm not surprised looking back at it. And it is definitely a book that I will reread in the future. I'll maybe give it like two years and then I'll reread it, but what a good book. So those were my top 10 of 2023 plus my 16 honorable mentions. <laughs> 
when I'm looking at these piles of books, I'm really happy with my reading year because of all of these books. I loved these books. These are the books that I primarily gave all five stars to, if not almost five stars. If you have any recommendations of books that are similar to these or books that you think that I will enjoy and give five stars to, please let me know and also let me know what your top 10 top 5 top 2 books were for 2023 i am so looking forward to seeing what we read in 2024 i am so so excited and i feel like i have so many good books that i want to read i'm like i don't know what to begin with it's been a struggle already of trying to figure out what to read but we're gonna push through and hopefully we get more five stars although i don't want to have this be more hard on myself to pick a top 10 for the end of 2024 i do hope that we get more five stars in the coming year Thank you all for watching. If you've reached to the end of this video, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I will talk to you all very, very soon. Happy reading. Bye.